Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in today's video, we're gonna do some fusion modeling on how to make this tapered recess into geometry. Now, when we were doing the Revel Point Mini video, the back of the scanner had this type of geometry on it. And I thought that this would make a good video on how to model that. Well, this morning when I got online, Fusion 360 School had a video doing just that. So I'm not gonna replicate things that were covered in that video for the most part, but I'm gonna talk about some different tips and techniques, especially when you run into complex strategies or complex problems. So what we're gonna do is take a look at a couple sketches, and if you wanna follow along, you can go to the description and download this data set. But we're gonna start with the sketch called Split. We're gonna use the Split Body tool. We're gonna to select the body, and then we're gonna use this one here that's in the X-axis direction. And then I'm gonna to go to my bodies folder and I'm gonna hide the original body, which is now called body six or body eight. It changes depending on how many times you've made bodies in your design. So what we're gonna do is select the top face and use move copy. When we do this, it should default to move object type face, but if it doesn't, make sure that you check this dropdown and set it to faces. You can do this with either free move or by rotate. You just wanna simply make sure that the axis that the rotation happens is on this back edge. And then we're gonna rotate this down five degrees and say, okay. Then bring back the original body, use combine and join them together. Make sure that you are on the combine operation. And then we can come back in and use tools like fillet, which is F on the keyboard. And we can round these out. I'm gonna set it at four millimeters and then use the chamfer tool on the top edge. I'm gonna add a two millimeter chamfer and then the fillet tool one more time and add a two millimeter fillet and there we go. So pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Now, the basic premise here is that we split the section that we wanted to modify away from the original body. Now this technique works across the board with all kinds of complex shapes. And I use it quite a lot by building a tool or a negative version of things and I wanna remove it, or by taking apart a single section of a solid body, making my adjustments and then putting it back together. Now, the main reason that you have to do this is because if you select your geometry and try to use move copy, when you start to rotate these faces, the entire thing is going to rotate. And a lot of times, if you already have complex geometry, it just simply will fail. So let's take a look at some other examples, things that won't strictly work for this type of workflow. For the second example, the sketch split two, we're once again going to use split body. And now we're going to select this sketch here and split it away. Now, the problem that we have here is we no longer have a true axis to rotate that face around. So if we use move copy and we select this face, once again, making sure that we do have faces selected and we try to rotate it, we can't select both of these. We can only select one. And if we begin rotating this face, what ends up happening is the opposite side gets raised up. So one solution to this problem is to use surfacing tools. Now, generally I want to avoid the surfacing tools whenever they are basically making the process more complex. But a lot of times we have to go to them for simple situations where solid tools just don't work. So for this, I'm gonna to go to create. We're gonna find our ruled surface tool. We're gonna to set this to direction and we wanna select both of these edges. For our direction, we're gonna select this end face here and we're gonna begin pulling this out. Now, a lot of times when you do this, you'll note that nothing happens. Now, if nothing happens, what you wanna do is deselect the direction, select it again, and this time we're gonna select a plane. Now, sometimes when you select geometry on a body, whether you realize it or not, it might not be applicable for whatever that tool is using. Sometimes it lets you select it, sometimes it doesn't. But in this case, we're gonna taper this at five degrees, and this is gonna give us the surface that we can use to cut that solid body. So once again, we can use split body, or we can use some of the other tools like thicken and cut it away. I'm gonna use split body. I'm gonna get rid of this top section with my surface. I'm gonna select it and use V on the keyboard to hide it. And then we're gonna bring back the main portion of the rim. So now we can go back to our combine tool, select this and add this in. And now you can see that we were able to create that complex split. And if I use control and four to hide my edges, you can see that we do have that slight raised edge there just simply based on the way that that edge was cut. So this is a great option, especially if you have a non-edge or non-linear section that you can use for rotation. We can still go back and do things like add a chamfer to the top. 
and we can add a fillet to the bottom. It will stop right there at the middle, so you will have to carry it across. And you probably will have to carry it down these edges as well, but this is a great way to add that detail. Now, the last example here is something similar. Once again, we're gonna use split body. We're gonna select the sketch three profile here. And the main difference that we have here is now we've got this cylindrical section. So the last tool that we looked at where we used our ruled surface would work in this case and we could certainly use it. So if we go to ruled surface and we select this edge for a direction, once again, we're gonna select that, uh, that plane, which is YZ and we can pull this down at an angle. This is perfectly fine and it's a great way for us to do this, but we already learned that with our last technique. So what's a different technique that we could use for this one? Well, what I'm gonna do is create a sketch. And in this sketch, I'm gonna start by selecting slice. Now this whole thing was designed about the origin, which is generally a good thing. So I'm gonna use my tool for intersect. I'm gonna find that inside intersecting edge. And what I wanna do is build a revolve cut tool. So using my line tool, I'm gonna to just drag a line down. I'm gonna bring it up, back over, and back down. Using my dimension tool, I can make sure that this is at least five degrees, which is what everything else has been. And I'm not gonna take the time to fully dimension everything, but what we're gonna do is use a revolve cut. Now, once again, this is a solid tool. Axis of revolution will be Z. And this allows us to cut away that section so if we bring back our main rim, we use combine, put it back. This is gonna give us that nice clean cut with that rounded edge. Once again, ruled surface would be perfectly fine in a case like this, but keep in mind that sometimes ruled surface isn't going to be the right tool. We already saw that we were able to use split body in all of these cases, and we were able to use things like a revolved cut. So whenever you're coming across these types of geometry problems, make sure that you explore your options and figure out which one's gonna work best. I always say that you should start with the most simplest approach. So if split body and move face is gonna be the easiest option, go with that one. If you have to dive into doing things like ruled surfaces and maybe making offset surfaces or other surfaces that you can use to trim a solid body, then certainly go down that path if the geometry requires it. But just remember that a lot of times there are multiple solutions to every problem. So make sure that you do at least spend some time, figure out your different options and make sure that you have the right choice. If you have any questions on this, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.